Hey guys, welcome back to my channel today. We're going to be discussing about David Ramsey's seven baby steps. But this time I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to be adjusting it for inflation because he, when he wrote his book, he wrote it in 1992, which was a different time period and it had different numbers in there. So we're going to be adjusting it for 2020. So stick around and let's get to it. The first step on David Ramsey's seven baby steps process is save $1,000 to start an emergency fund. This basically is an emergency fund that will help you for life unexpected events. Otherwise people would have to get into debt and they would have to borrow money to pay the bill for let's say a car breakdown or something like that. But if you adjust that $1,000 for inflation in today's dollars rather than in 1992, you would come out to somewhere around 1870, something like that. Then just be conservative and call it $2,000. So instead of saving $1,000 to start an emergency fund, let's just say you need to save $2,000 to save for an emergency fund. And that is for emergencies only, not to just spend for any other thing. So you want to keep that $2,000 in an emergency fund where you would need it when something happens, let's say a car breakdown, a leaky roof, or medical bill or something like that. So this money will help you not to touch your other savings that you have just for your day-to-day -day expenses. And for some people, this step is easy and for other people, it's very difficult. But if you wanna watch something to help you to save that first $2,000, watch a video that I made and I will leave a link down below or in a card somewhere here. Number two in his steps, in his baby steps, is pay off debt using the debt snowball method. So in this step, what you need to do is list all your debts from smallest to largest. And you start off with your credit cards, your medical bills, student loans, car payments, etc. Start paying off your smallest debt first, regardless of the interest rate, to keep you motivated and keep the momentum going. While you focus to pay off the smallest debt, you will pay the minimum on the rest of your debt while you're doing this method. When you pay the smallest debt, then move on to pay the next smallest debt by using the minimum payment from your first minimum payment and apply it to your next debt. So now you have two payments being applied to pay your debt. After you pay that one off, you will use the minimum payment from the first two debts and use those to pay off your third smallest debt so now you have three payments going towards it until you move on to pay off all of your debts. This method was very difficult for me and my wife as we were paying off our loans for our cars and for other credit cards that we had. But believe me, it pays off very well whenever you attack it with vengeance. You want to get rid of all of these debts as fast as you can. Number three in his step process or in his baby steps is save three to six months of expenses for emergencies. After the momentum of step two, it's easy to have your energy to fizzle out before you complete your emergency fund. Don't let that happen. Continue on, keep the momentum going. And instead of stopping at your $2,000 emergency fund, now you need to boost it up a little bit and move it to three to six months. But you can't do this unless you create a budget first. You need to know how much your expenses are every single month. You need to sit down and write down all your expenses. And I have a video on that as well. I will link it somewhere here in this video so you can go watch that. It's very simple to do. But once you do that, you will know what your monthly expenses are and you will have to keep this as your long-term goal to save three to six months. It doesn't happen very quickly. It's gonna take some time for you to do that. This type of large emergency fund will protect you against larger emergencies that life throws at you, like medical bills, like a broken down roof or a car where you need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars that you were not expecting to pay. My wife and I use an emergency fund to help us fund our expenses without getting into debt when we had an emergency arise in our family and that helped us to keep afloat so that we do not take on additional debt. So this is very crucial, especially now during this market time when there's high unemployment rates and jobs are being lost. It is very crucial to have three to six months of emergency fund set aside to help you get along with your expenses so that you do not get into debt. You don't want to get into debt right now at all costs possible. I can't emphasize how important this step is. Nobody has a secure job because we are all replaceable. 
and therefore it's important to save as much as possible into this fund and make sure to keep this money in a separate account so you aren't tempted to touch it. This step can also take a long time to build depending on how much you are putting aside each month and what your monthly expenses are. So if you are going to be spending let's say three to four thousand dollars a month in your expenses and you need to save three to six months you can easily see that this is going to be about a fifteen thousand dollar fund that you're going to be putting aside and depending on how much you're putting aside every month it would determine how many months it's going to take you to come up to that dollar amount number four in his baby step process is invest 15 percent of your household income into Roth IRAs and pre-tax retirement accounts it's very important to start thinking about your retirement no matter what your age is I know for younger people out there who are still young and not thinking about retirement it is a great time to start investing in your retirement right now you should be taking advantage of compound interest it will be working miracles for you and in fact if you start early enough you can become a millionaire very very early in life Start by investing in your company 401k to maximize the employer match because that is free money sitting on the table. If your employer doesn't match or even have a 401k, then invest more into your Roth IRA account. Invest into a Roth IRA account, one for you and one for your spouse so that both of you have one just in case. This is where the power of compound interest starts working for you and can make you a millionaire over a long period of time. The number fifth step in his seven baby steps is save for your children's college fund. Now if you don't have any children that's okay you can step this step or you can use this step to save up for a different account. Let's say if you want to save for a vacation or if you want to save for a renovation in your house or something like that you can use this step for something like that and by this step you should already be out of debt except for your mortgage and started a savings account. Now it's time to start investing into your children's college fund and their future. Two ways to start saving for your children's college fund is to open a 529 college savings plan or an ESA which is an education savings account. These are both tax advantage savings accounts that would help you to put aside money to help you to fund this account. Before you choose either options it's best to do your homework and see which one makes sense to you and then start putting money into it. If you don't have any children as I said earlier you can just skip this step and move on to baby step number six or you can use this step to help you to fund something else like a vacation or something else. Number six pay off your home mortgage early. After you have paid off all your debts and started your emergency funds and savings accounts you need to start paying off your largest debt which might be your mortgage. Any extra money you put towards your mortgage can save you thousands of dollars towards interest in the long run. Interest rates are very low right now and you can be refinancing into a 15 year mortgage rate very easily so that you can pay off that mortgage early on instead of waiting 30 years. Interest rates can be found on different websites and it's wise to always look for three to four different quotes to make sure that you're getting the lowest rate possible. If you don't have a mortgage put the extra money away so that you can put it down as a down payment towards a house. And number seven build wealth and give. David Ramsey is very big on giving and also enjoying life and he's very generous so this is one thing that really stands out to me because it is very important for wealthy people to help other people as well not just to hoard the wealth but also to share it and give it and help other people. Now this is the ultimate dream goal of being financially independent so that you can help others and have fun and be free. This is your last step and it should be the most fun experience that you will ever have. The purpose of gaining wealth should make you more generous and leaving an inheritance for future generations. You should help and be generous like no one else and like David Ramsey says be insanely generous. Your perseverance and good habits got you here. Don't give up just yet. Keep the momentum going and make it a lifestyle. Now that you have reached your financial goals start by helping someone else get started on their own journey. Don't just stop there. Teach it down to your children, to your friends, to your family members and let the momentum keep going so that more people will be financially independent using these baby steps. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section if you agree or disagree with David Ramsey's seven baby steps. 
If you found this information helpful, please give it a like. This would help YouTube's algorithm to share it with others. And also please subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon so you don't miss any new videos I put out. Also, don't forget to leave a comment down below and let the community know your thoughts. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.